Hello and welcome. In this question we will find a parametric vector form for the plane 4x1 minus 3x2 plus 6x3 equals 12. And notice we say find a parametric vector form of the plane. In fact there are many equivalent parametric vector forms for the same plane. So we're going to find one of them and this may look different to the one that you find. We're also going to do this question in two ways. There's a first way which is very visual where you find some points on the plane and then from those three points you find a parametric vector form of the plane and that's nice because you get a picture and a feeling for what this plane actually looks like. There's a second way which is somewhat mechanical and straightforward and gets you the answer but it's less visual. We will do both ways. First the visual way. Find a parametric vector form for this plane. The first way we need three points. The easiest three points are the ones on the x1, x2 and x3 axes. So we'll find these points in much the same way as you would find them on a two-dimensional plane in high school. We'll set say x1 and x2 to be equal to zero and find the x3 component. If x1 is equal to zero and x2 is equal to zero, then what must x3 be? Well, if that bit 0 and that bit 0, then 6x3 is 12, so x3 must be 2. Good, so whatever this mysterious plane looks like, we know that this point, we'll do it in blue, we know that this point here is on it. Good, let's carry on and find another point on this plane. If x2 is equal to 0 and x3 is equal to 0, then, hmm, well, if that bit 0 and that bit 0, then 4x1 is 12, so x1 must be 3. x1. And we found another point on the plane with x2 and x3, 0, and in blue, yeah we're getting a slightly better feeling for what this plane might look like. We've got now two points on this plane. Let's find a third. If x3 is equal to 0 and x1 is equal to 0, then, well, if that bit 0 and that bit 0, negative 3x2 is 12, so x2 must be equal to negative 4. and we have our third point on the plane with x2 component negative 4, like that. Now we can actually get a feeling for what this plane looks like. It's a two-dimensional object covering these three points. Give some kind of representation using a triangle like this. So the cover the surface of that triangle. And if you were to extend this triangle infinitely in all directions, then that would be a visual representation of the plane. With these three points in hand, we can find the parametric vector form of the plane. We need a point on the plane and two vectors which are parallel to the plane. This is why parametric vector form of the plane is not unique because it's up to you to choose one of these three points to be on the plane and then from there choose two vectors parallel to the plane. So there's a lot of freedom to choose your parametric vector form of the plane. Let's choose this point here to be on the plane. x is equal to a point on the plane. Let's choose this one with 0, 0, 2. So that's x1 coordinate 0, x2 coordinate 0, x3 coordinate 2. And then we need to choose two vectors that are parallel to the plane. The vectors we'll choose are this vector here and this vector here. 
So it's lambda times, let's see, now it's from this vector go to this vector, so that will be 3, 0, 0, minus 0, 0, 2, plus mu times from this vector go to this vector. 0, negative 4, 0, minus 0, 0, 2, which is 0, 0, 2, plus lambda times 3, 0, negative 2, plus mu, 0, negative 4, negative 2. And it's relatively straightforward to check that this plane, this parametric vector form of the plane, indeed does contain those points it's supposed to contain. If you set lambda to be equal, going from here, if you set lambda to be 0 and mu to be 0, then you see that this point's on the plane. If you set lambda to be 1 and mu to be 0, then you see that that bit goes away, that will cancel with that, and this point's on the plane. Similarly, if you set lambda to be 0 and mu to be 1, then that goes away and this will cancel with this, so you are left with 0, negative 4, 0. So in fact, it's easy to see just by looking at this that this is the correct, this is a correct parametric vector form of the plane. I mentioned earlier that there was a faster way of doing this question. And here it is. you just start writing down parametric vector form of the plane. You begin with your x, vector x like this, and you expand that a bit. You unpack your x with x1, x2, x3, like that. And then you replace one of these symbols with one of those symbols from Cartesian form of the plane. You may not have all the symbols available to you, but you have to choose one. I'm going to select x1. And I will replace x1 with its expression up here. So that's 1 quarter of 12 plus 3x2 minus 6x3. x2 stays as x2, x3 stays as x3. This kind of has the right feeling of parametric vector form. We've got some numbers, but we've also got some x2 and some x3. We've, we've got two degrees of freedom within this equation these degrees of freedom will become our lambdas and our mu's. So we'll let this be equal to 3, 0, 0, plus, let's get our x2's together, so that's 3 quarters, 1, 0, x2, plus negative 6 on 4, 0, 1, x3. Right. And it's more traditional to write lambda and mu instead of x2 and x3, so I'll rewrite this as equals 3, 0, 0, plus lambda, 3 quarters, 1, 0, plus mu, negative 6 quarters, 0, 1. And here we have another parametric vector form of the same plane. It's much more mechanical and straightforward. In fact, you, have, you don't have to have any visualisation for what the plane looks like at all to do it this way. So here we have two ways of finding parametric vector form of a plane.